you can just wake up and that's you. Mostly, yeah. Do you wake up with the glasses on or do you already? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, the glasses have always been here. Like you wake up, they're already there, yeah. the hair's already. Clothes are on. The perfectly matched clothes. I think my mom changes me. While you're sleeping? Yeah. Now that's a film idea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh we don't swear on the show. Oh. We're, we're trying to remain, we want to be open family to, uh, friendly. to family advertisers. Well, you're interviewing like the wrong guy. I know, I know, in the wrong film. <laughs> yeah. Clearly Van Gogh is a children's film, right? Absolutely, yeah. It was uh, based on a lot of my childhood memories, that's for sure. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. yeah. Tonight on Offset, actress Lisa Snow and writer-director Keith Hodder. camera as well it's kind of like a fly on the wall right you know yeah you would if you were in a room and you saw a fly you would acknowledge the fly occasionally but you're not going to talk <laughs> to a fly for a, for an hour that would just be weird fly. or maybe you would maybe it would be a nice i like flies do you no. it'd be a nice little like uh acting exercise yeah talk to the fly yep okay yeah that's a good name for a show talk, talk to, to the, the fly. fly i would definitely go see that show i'll write it you should. I'll write it for you. Write it for me. Can you cast me in it? Sure. I need to revive my career. Okay. I think Talk to the Fly is just what I need. To <laughs> talk to the Fly. To, and we'll cast Lee Jay too. Lee That's Jay? my father. Yep. Talk yep. to the Fly starring you and Lee Jay. Well, you can be in it too if you and want. And me. You could be yep. Lee Jay's mom. Can I be the Fly? Would you be the Fly? I could be the Fly. I think you could pull off the Fly. You get like Have a cat suit, but it would be a fly suit because it would be like... fly legs. That's a lot of budget though. That's, that's asking a lot of like the costume department, I think. Well, you know, everyone's up for a challenge in Talk true. to the Fly. I think it should be like Talk to the Fly exclamation mark. Yes. Well, like that's we need some yeah. punctuation for sure. Absolutely. Talk to the Fly. Yeah. Talk to the Fly. Talk well, you to could have fly. different posters with a different yeah. thing at the end of each one. Yeah. You know, and a question mark. Dot, dot, dot. A dot, dot, dot. That's like really all you can Like an upside down have. exclamation mark just to throw people for a loop. I think this community would really get behind the upside down exclamation yeah. mark. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that yeah. would be helpful yeah. for the community. Did you ever play uh, Charlotte in Charlotte's Web or anything like that? Have you no. been in a costume before? No, but you know what? Charlotte's Web was the first play that I ever saw. I saw that Neptune when I was in me grade too. two. Yep. And it's what made me want to be an actor. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. It was like, great story. People do that? That's their jobs? And my mom, uh, or no, my dad's like, uh, no, they don't. Everyone's doctors. So I'm like, Hmm. Well, I want to be that kind of doctor when I grow up. <laughs> right. Well, the doctors make a little bit more money, but yes. not not much. Not much. Not I mean, for you. Like yeah. they don't make much. They make a lot more than I do. I mean, I make a lot of money. Like it's exhausting. How much money, money I make? make. I mean, wow. I just I just roll in it. Um, wow. It rains on me. You know, if people like walk down the street and there's like a rain cloud above yep. them, it's a money cloud for me. Wow, that's uh, this is a really encouraging interview then for yeah for the actors at home. Yeah, no, it's or depressing because a lot of them are struggling. Money. Big money for oh, you. Oh yeah, yeah, huge, huge. Wow, that's incredible. I own this street. Really? Yeah. It's... Well, I, I appreciate you uh, giving us the opportunity well, to be on it. You have permission to be here. You got champagne. Ooh. Thank you. He can you. stay. He can stay. You can stick around. Is he, is he an actor? <laughs> he's, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's a money club. Did we oh, hire him yeah. or did you hire him, dude? He's one of my people. He's one of your, I don't even know what he said. Was it something rude or was it something, can you repeat it? Uh, he said ch uh, Champlain boots. I think he was making fun of my, oh, okay. well, no, I think he was admiring them. Admiring my boots. Yeah, I think, I think if he didn't like them, he just wouldn't even comment at all. Yeah, because that would have been rude. Right. So instead he chose to compliment me under his breath while twirling a cigarette with I liked thumb. it because it was, it was a passing comment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It didn't really give you a chance to, like, I could tell you were almost going to respond, but he was, was kind of like awkwardly too far away by the time yeah, you could even... to give him something witty in return. Yeah, he's done that before, clearly. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. He's good. He's one of the better ones I've hired. Absolutely. I'd like him to be in uh, Talk to the Fly. <laughs> <if you laughs> I think mind. we could make that happen. Yeah. I think he heard us talking about it and he made that comment. He's like, oh, hello. Did someone say Talk to the Fly? Exclamation mark upside down? Because here I am. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, yeah, I think you might have some competition for the fly because when I saw him, I, something about him just said fly. What a jerk. 
He could be like the father fly that dies at the beginning. Yeah. Like uh, an emotional start to the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, I can watch that show. we're all going to watch that show. <laughs> but most people watching this show right now are saying, oh my god, that's that girl from... Uh, Naked? I was going to say Devil's Disciple. Oh, but, right. Okay, yeah. Naked as well. Both of them. Right, Both yes. Both of them. And a series of, of shows, movies, and what have you. But you're right. Right now you're doing a show called Naked. What can you tell us about Naked? Uh, well, Naked is the first play that I've uh, ever written. It uh, centers around a character named Vanessa, who is a spoiled little rich girl, and she's in a bathtub, and the family's housekeeper, Mary, comes in to clean the tub, and Vanessa refuses to get out, and an epic battle ensues. I wrote it for last year, so for the 2010 Fringe Festival, uh, for my company, Forerunner Playwrights Theatre. Uh, we had been given a spot late, uh, sort of after um, they had accepted all the submissions. They had someone drop out at the last minute, so there's an extra spot that they offered to us. It's myself and Stephanie McDonald. Um, yeah, and we, when I was writing the, the extended version, I had toyed around with the idea of adding another character. Uh, there's a character named Matt that is mentioned that I thought might be fun to add, but in the end, it, uh, I just kept everything in the bathroom. We had started writing it, exploring the idea of keeping something interesting and dynamic in a static place. So I was thinking like, you know, an elevator, but you know, a, an elevator is a story that you have heard before. So we thought, well, what about a bathtub? Put someone in a bathtub and they can't leave the bathtub. So the first act, Vanessa's in the tub the whole time, and the second act, Mary's in the tub the whole time. Us is really kill us. I asked him not to do the route for the next hours, but obviously he didn't understand what I was saying. I said it in passing, kind of like that gentleman that we saw earlier. Yeah, it's a little too under your breath. Yeah, and I didn't give the bus driver a chance to respond yes or no. <laughs> but anyways, so so the show. Oh my God! Look out, Devin! Whoa! <laughs> I thought that was coming right for you. Right for you. Did you see how close it was? It's not a bus went over the curb. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> that was just a fly bird. You didn't really move that much though for the bus. Yeah, you're like, well, you're pretty confident in your stance. My life Oh man. Okay. Anyways, I forget my question now. No, Tell us more. I'm sure about it was me. really witty. Did you find it hard to write for yourself a, a character that you're gonna play, or was it easier to get into? Um, I think it was a bit, it was easier to memorize my lines, that's for sure. Um, I don't know, um, I've never really written anything for someone else to be in, so I guess maybe that, that should be the next thing I You're do. You're a little conceited, aren't you? Yeah, well, considering I wrote one thing, so, but right. I, it's, it's all because I'm really conceited. Right. Uh, and I figure if someone else isn't going to hire me, then I'm going to hire myself. Cause, Absolutely. Well, that's... <laughs> How else am I going to fill my money cloud? Um, but, you know, you know, talk to the fly, that'll be my first thing I write for other people. Right, but I, I noticed when we were talking about talk to the fly, you did sneak yourself uh, uh, No, I there. believe you snuck no. We're going to play it back right now. We'll play see. It back. We'll make a $2 bet. $2 bet? Well, 2% of your money cloud. <laughs> Whatever amount that is. So, okay. Okay. Can Mom, I be the fly? Would you be the fly? I could be the fly. I think you can pull off the fly. Get like a a prepare for riches. Yes. Um, but you're going to be wrong, so... Well, the audience knows, right? They've just seen the they clip. They know. We so don't. We're not sure who put you in there. I think it... I think it was you. I think you were I think it was generous. the gentleman that walked past. He you was like... What? Champagne boots. Champagne boots? Mr. Boots, yeah. Champagne boots. Did he say champagne or champlain? I don't know Champ what a champlain boot is or a champagne boot. I think champlain, like the explorer. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So it was, are those supposed to be boots that look like him? Well, I guess they look like maybe they could be pirate boots. Oh, okay. Or they could possibly be pussy boots. Possibly. I know sometimes I read roles and I almost don't want to audition because I'm like, oh, it's going to be really yeah. outside of my, my comfort zone. So when you're writing for yourself, do you write you know, a character that you're going to have to go outside your comfort zone a little bit or do you write within your comfort zone. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of comfort zones. Right. <laughs> um, 
I am distracted. <laughs> I, uh, I really tried with Naked to write outside of my comfort zone. Last summer I took uh, a performance creation lab with One Yellow Rabbit Theatre out in Calgary and a lot of it was uh, like writing and writing exercises and Blake Brooker who was teaching the writing portion of it um, talked about with your writing you should write something that you wouldn't want your grandmother to read because then it's probably going to scare you. And I was right. like, okay, let's put me naked in a tub then, Nan. And uh, so I really tried to write not, uh, not thinking of myself, but I mean, of course, you have to think about yourself because it's yourself that's writing, but I really tried to write with an open mind and tried not to censor myself or let sort of fear control the words if they, you know, if something was going to benefit the character or move the show in a certain way that I wanted it to go, I wasn't going to let my own fear or insecurities stop that. Right. You know? So there's probably a, a character in the show that walks uncomfortably close to you? Yeah. That was clearly, <laughs> clearly uh, outside your comfort zone. So tell us about your company. It's Forerunner. Is that how you Yeah, guess? Forerunner Playwrights Theatre. It was founded in 2002. Um, and right now it, it consists of myself, Nate Crawford, and Natasha McClellan. Nate and Natasha were two of the original founders. Um, so our mandate is to produce all new work and we try and have an Atlantic Canadian focus whether it be theme but more importantly playwright so we're a playwright driven company we um, we're there to serve sort of whatever the playwright needs for their production whether it be a full-scale production or sort of a smaller workshop production or um, even just like playing around with some new ideas which is what Naked sort of started out as because you're also doing another festival I'm told of some mm -hmm. sort yeah it's called well, they're going to be doing a repeat of a festival that Plutonium... Well, I'm, and I'm not 100% sure if it's confirmed, but last year Plutonium Playhouse um, put on a festival in November that was very successful, and they're thinking of reprising this festival again in November. Okay. That's called... The festival. Okay, so it's... All right. I don't know too much uh, about this festival, Okay. so I can't say too, too much. Okay, we'll just, we'll just say that then. We'll just say what it's called and... We'll let the children decide <laughs> whether they want to go, right? I think that's I think that's valid. Absolutely. Anything else you want to shamelessly plug? Do you have a website? Does your we do oh, forerunnerplaywrights.com. Okay. Uh, our Sorry. new home on the World Wide Web. It's gonna be right there. Around there. Magical. Around there. Yep. Um, yeah, and we're still in the process of getting it developed. We have it linked to our old website, so it's not quite where we want it to be, but it's. Uh, uh, a work in progress and you can also follow us on Twitter twitter.com slash forerunner plays okay. and like us on Facebook forerunner playwrights we only theater. usually allow two plugs we're gonna charge you for each additional one so go ahead Facebook oh god what else do I want to talk about what can I plug I have a lot of money so I can just I'm yeah. just gonna plug all day Absolutely. Um, do you guys have a YouTube page we don't have a YouTube uh, page maybe we should get one you probably should. Yeah. Yeah. But you've got, so Facebook, is, what's the Facebook? It's Forerunner just, Playwrights Theater. Yeah, you can so like just us. Just type it in and yep. it'll pop up. And Forerunner Plays is on Twitter. Okay. That's the one I like the most because I'm a big Twitter fan. Nice. All right, so check out Forerunner Plays on Twitter. On Twitter, yeah. I don't know how the Twitter thing works. Is it just like? Twitter.com slash Forerunner Plays. Okay. It'll probably be on the screen. They can just yep. click on it. And they can look forward to talk to a fly. Next summer. Talk to a fly, yes. Thank Talk you to a fly for next summer. With me. Absolutely. Cool. We'll be right back. <laughs>
cuts them up and paints with their blood, drains it. Um, and mostly the way we kind of got into this position of having it on the DVD was uh, Jason Eisner was reciprocating what happened to him back in 2007 with the Grindhouse film, and he right. won with Hobo with the shotgun, which kind of started his ball rolling. So he did the same thing, offered the chance for filmmakers across the globe to enter in the trailer contest, and we were lucky enough to win it. I saw when the video went up pretty much the night of, I think it was like March 10th or something, which is Friday. And the minute I saw that, I knew I had to do something with it. Because, of course, you were probably around the same age when Hobo with the Shotgun trailer came out. I found that incredibly inspiring. Wished I did something like that. And so, well, once this came up, I knew I couldn't let the chance go by. And, uh, yeah, so I gave my friends Peter Strauss, who's the co-director and co-writer, and Jared Pullum, who was the cinematographer and co-writer, a call. And we got together on a Sunday, brain like brainstormed uh, some ideas. And uh, we wrote it that night. I, I'd come up with the loose idea of about an artist, like a killer artist. I came up with the title Van Gore, and then we pretty much wrote it all in one night, the whole trailer. Wow. So from there we shot, uh, took us probably about a week to cast everyone, um, to get all the props, to get a makeup person, scrounge up the money for it. And then we shot it over two days, back to back. And uh, editing probably took about a week, because we, uh, we had a composer from the UK, Christopher Fisher, who was actually composing live for us over Skype. So we'd kind of be sitting there as he was making the music, telling him if we didn't like a sound cue, telling him if we did. Uh, there was this whole one time where he actually did a whole scene. I liked it, Peter hated it. And so he had to re-score the whole scene, but he was great, Chris was great. He drains the bodies and paints with their blood. Sure he does, sweetheart. Sure he does. <laughs> is high as a mother kite. Choose him. Die to be your next I'm not a gore guy myself, right? And I was highly disturbed by the film. Good. So I, I, I but I watched it anyway. I sat Thank through you. it. I, uh, I, I kept my eyes on it. But I got to say, I did enjoy it, good. despite the fact that I'm not a gore person. That's good to hear. <laughs> it is good to hear. Yeah. But I think people that are really into gore. Do you think somebody that's that's seen maybe the hobo with a shotgun trailer or maybe the hobo with a shotgun film? and haven't seen Van Gore yet. Right. Is it something that's kind of under the same realm? Would you think there's something they would enjoy as well? I would think so. When we were making it, we were really trying to uh, match or raise the bar of what Jason Eisner did in the original Hobo with the Shotgun trailer and in the short film Tree Venge. Um, he had really set the bar high. I think he kills a baby in Tree Venge as well, a stump to the head, if I remember correctly. So we came in already having the bar really raised up quite a bit for us. Let's button that up. I mean, I, I need them to do a, a run through. Like, what are you thinking? Like a, like a more looking down, like a high shot. Cool. More look, okay, looking uh, down yeah. at them? Yeah, 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 like looking down at the puddle. So, like it's like this like, nice calm sort of thing. I don't want them to get like, too just, hard, but uh, if you tell them to go through that puddle. Just sit on, on their... I mean, come look at the wrist lasers. There's a couple that are really good. I like that. It's funny though, when you mentioned when you're describing that, it sounds very similar to uh, the way Jason Eisner described yeah. his original trailer process. Right. Really quick, kind of uh, gathering the friends together and making it happen. But right. what were some of the challenges you faced? I mean, even in a large film where you have four months, people run into challenges. Yeah. I would assume all that's compacted when you only yeah. have 48 hours. Um, we were lucky. If anything, some of the only challenges were like, uh, we had hired a lot of extras to come in, especially for the art gallery scene. A lot of people didn't show up, so we really just had to be careful how we were placing actors and that sort of thing in the scene. Other than that, we were very lucky. Everything became very streamlined. It was probably one of the best sets I've ever worked on, the best crew, the best cast. We had a really good time. And uh, as much as I don't want to kind of sell off the question, it was pretty, a pretty easy time. Yeah. So you really didn't have any hardships. We haven't really seen you go through any struggle yet. No, I have yet to uh, punch an actor, scream, or kill any of my crew members yet. Right, yeah. but I'm sure that's to come. That's to come, yeah. yeah. Speaking of the party scene, right. my favorite scene because I, I, I get squirmy with gore. Yeah. So I really enjoyed that one scene. The, like, the time to breathe for a yeah, second. Yeah, that one grouping <laughs> yeah. of seconds where I didn't see uh, <laughs> someone getting cut up. Right. But uh, I, I know you, you know and, I, and I know your face. Yes. And I could have swore yeah. that I saw you in the background making <laughs> yeah. a cameo appearance. Is that you in the background? It's not me. It's not you. It's not me. Even my mom, a lot of people thought it was me. Um, it's actually an actor, Zach Che, one of the extras we brought in, came in both days, did a great job. Did you cast and him to play the pretend cameo by you in the background? That would have been clever. That would have been smart. I wish I was that smart. I'm not. 
Looks a lot like you. He looks a bit like me, so he must be a pretty good-looking guy, but not me. Um, I do have a cameo in it, though. Really? Yeah, Peter has a cameo as well. Peter's the guy who gets his throat cut. And so okay. like, uh, we were laughing the whole time we did that. But, uh, yeah, I have a cameo. You won't see my face. If anyone at home can spot where you make the cameo and let us know, possibly we'll send them a T-shirt of some kind. Maybe a Van Gore shirt. That'd be cool. If they can spot uh, where your cameo appearance is where your cameo appearance takes place. Yeah, you gotta do a lot of digging, for sure. We're going to a hip party at Van Clark's pad. It's going to open our minds. No, he'll paint with your blood. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be such a square, Sally. <laughs> Knowing that it was gonna be a trailer, was it different than shooting this like a regular short film? It's different just in the technical aspects of it, I would say, like, um, it was actually a lot more fun, I wish you could just shoot trailers your whole life. Because it was, it was really great, whereas with a short film or even a feature, you're shooting sometimes a really long scene, like an eight minute talking scene. And it just wears the crew down, it wears the cast down every time they have to repeat it or let's change the angle. It's just very repetitive and it's just, it just wears everyone down. The great thing was each day we were shooting four or five different aspects of the trailer. We'd get it ready, shoot it, went really well, maybe do a few extra takes for safety and just kind of move around. It was really, really liberating to just, uh, it was just a lot of fun. What about the guy that had to be tied up in the uh, in getting all the puncture wounds? Was it fun oh. for him? Was he there for a long time waiting? He was there for a long time. Uh, I couldn't read him very well because he was a really quiet guy. He did a great job, but uh, yeah, he was a really shy guy. And I was just like, "Are you okay? Is everything good?" Oh well, yeah, everything's fine. So I was just uh, we were making sure we treated him really well. He did a great job, though. Would you like feed him water or anything? Like try to? Oh no, we weren't that nice. Oh okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's. It sounds like you were nice enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just asked him once. I think. Probably through the magic of television, they've actually been watching clips of Van Gore throughout yeah. this interview. So maybe now they're wondering. A boy with a shotgun started off as a trailer. <laughs> yeah. Became this huge, massive hit. Right. The most successful film in the history of our country. Yeah. A lot of pressure now on Van Gore. Right. Is that, uh, is that what you're looking toward now, making a, a feature version of it? Definitely. We want to work at a few more kinks in our own filmmaking process before we dive into it. But uh, when we were writing the trailer, we kind of thought of characters and thought of scenarios that, of course, would make it into the feature film, kind of like what Jason and those guys did. You'll see, a lot of, uh, you'll see a lot of scenes in the movie that are identical to the original trailer. So we kind of wrote it in a way that we knew we could expand it if we wanted to. So it's definitely something we're looking into, definitely something we're getting really interested about, but we want to kind of push through and work some other things out before we dive into our first feature experience. You're not really taking a breather. You're, you're no, right back I can't. at it. I never take a breather. It pisses Jared off. It pisses Peter off. But uh, no, it's what off. it's all about. It pisses you off? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, sorry.